good evening ladies and gentlemen thank you for your patience uh, we were actually waiting for uh, uh, mr debashish monty of uti to join us however there's been a problem at their end as on technology they are sorting uh, it out and hopefully we will have the pleasure of uh, his company very soon in the meanwhile uh, uh, i think uh, we should get started so uh, friends welcome to the session and as you know today we are going to be talking about everything that you need to know about the new sebi ria regulations and uh, privileged to have sandeep parekh with us sandeep uh, has many distinctions and i have selected a few okay uh sandeep has been the youngest ever executive director at sebi so he was with sebi from 2006 and 2008 and he was looking at uh, the compliance and the vigilance departments okay sandeep is also um, visiting faculty at i'm at the prestigious i'm in the bath uh his articles have featured in financial times he is a frequent contributor to leading indian newspapers including economic times today he runs his own uh, law firm which focuses uh, completely on the financial sector it's called fincheck okay uh, so uh, welcome sandeep thank you thank you so much okay uh, now uh, we are today obviously talking about the new sebi ria regulations uh, now uh, uh, in fact i think uh, uh, the problem at uh, devashish end has been sorted out I, i think he'll be joining us soon so let me also uh, t- uh, introduce uh, devashish monty devashish monty is the president and head of sales at uti he has been with them for 34 years and uh, uh, over these 20, 34 years he's been known to be a well wisher of the mfd community he's very close to them he's always championed their cause in uh, uh, whatever capacity that he uh, can okay so i think uh, debeshi should be joining us very shortly uh, but before that uh, uh, sandeep uh, how do these regulations impact uh, what to be called today mutual fund distributors uh, right. top line one just a second it's okay yeah yeah sorry so i think fundamentally it impacts uh, distributors in a handful of ways uh and remember the new changes have actually been incorporated not in terms of uh, amending the regulations for distributors but the regulations for investment advisor advisors correct so there is there's been no change in terms of directly uh, regulating distributors and you know, any modification which uh, the first is and you know i've got the most number of questions this is actually the third session i'm doing for uh, on this subject okay and almost 70% of the 70 to 80% of questions uh, revolve around the names and you know okay. obviously you know that's kind of a mother question for many people because they do they build up it's not just a name right shakespeare said what's in a name but yeah, yeah. Uh, it's you build up the intellectual property over 10 20 years and yes. suddenly you have to give it up and you know you start with uh, a logo or name which people don't even recognize yes so it, it is it is a big deal it's not just uh, you know a simple change of roc form okay uh now what 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 we've done uh, is we have analyzed this uh, and hopefully you know you you will have a circular from amphi in yes. the next two or, two or three days yes uh, which which will give you a sense of what is okay and what is not okay but okay. Let, let me just give you in just two or three sentences uh, what is okay and what is not okay from a principal uh, perspective and then of course okay we can talk a bit about it either in the chat or uh, in the q and o session okay. but broadly yeah. you know anything which is um, finance slash wealth along with advice or management okay you know, these two words when put together is kind of is is the kryptonite really for okay really. so if you have just uh, purely you know financial services or financial consultancy or something like that that's probably okay 
so one of the words by itself might be okay but uh, you know whenever you put finance and advise together or any synonym of these two words together yes uh, then then you definitely have a big problem okay um, if including if you put it on in your logo in your on your letter head if you put ifa you know as a short form uh, and then you you know you can if you want to uh, try any of those uh, other uh, synonyms that i think then you have an issue otherwise you are you are broadly okay if you are kind of if you just talk about you are a consultant or you know name is something like consultant by itself or even financial consultant according to me should be okay Okay. uh but uh, that's kind of still stuff a little bit in the gray gray zone yeah but because consultant would wealth... be consultant would be a kind of a synonym for advisor right I right mean. so i mean so again if is if you don't plug it along with uh, financial if you don't say financial consultant then you should you're probably in a kind of safe zone then uh, so that's why i said it's a bit of a gray area but yes. broadly i think it's it's it's, it's doable again we'll let's okay. wait for the amfi guideline i think that things will yeah. be quite clear so you'll have a black list you'll have a white list and you have a gray list which is kind of the in terms of volume you know the gray list will be the largest so yeah. people have yeah. a lot of questions and i think sebi is not going to answer this question for you no sebi so, is not uh, going to answer and i think uh, my, my information is right uh, the sebi has delegated this task to amfi correct uh, to uh, in fact I, i also read somewhere that uh, there is a certain email id of amfi to which people are supposed to address their queries about yeah. on what is uh, permissible and what is not right okay. so i think that should be out in a day or two okay. so you'll have a better sense of uh, okay. you know what what is doable what is not doable and you know uh, okay. whether amfi is actually going to go through each name or not that i don't know for sure okay, uh, okay. i i doubt they will have that kind of bandwidth Okay. but uh, they will they will give you a sense of uh, what what is doable and what is not and again uh, we've advised and we've not advising amfi but we advise certain people and they uh, made representations there etc so hopefully as i said you know in a day or so you should have a sense of okay. what is black and what is white and there will okay. be a sense of the gray area they okay. i don't think anybody can answer all the uh, 20000 questions and names uh, that yeah. we we may have but uh, okay. you know broadly you'll have a good sense okay okay but if i were to actually throw a few more uh, these things on uh, to you uh, we've received a lot of people uh, queries and i've kind of put them all together so that uh, we don't spend time uh, addressing yeah. each concern separately yeah. but uh, uh, can in, is independent word okay uh, by itself uh no i think the word independent itself is problematic even without okay. a combination because see the idea of the uh, seb if you see there are three consultation papers of sebi and you know you get a good sense of the regulation from what sebi is thinking and yeah. uh, essentially they are they are kind of allergic to the point perspective of independent because you're not independent you yes. you're supposed to be uh, so, so so to speak beholden to the manufacturer as opposed yes. to the client okay and uh, so they i think the word independent by itself will have uh, have an issue so i okay. i don't think it'll be a good idea okay. to continue the word independent okay consultant like consultant by that? itself yeah by itself yeah. i think is fine but okay. financial consultant gets into a little gray zone okay uh, money managers but if you have a for instance a unique name for instance uh, sandeep consultant i think that should be fine okay. right so if okay. you say finserv consultant then i think that's more gray zone uh, okay. sorry you said one more word yeah money managers money manager definitely not it's almost uh, a synonym fin, of finvest a similar uh, you know finvest yeah, yeah that's kind of a darker zone of gray really okay so, yeah, okay yeah. okay 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 uh debashish welcome uh, i was shooting we just got started uh sandeep was taking us through what is possible as far as the nomenclature is concerned the second thing uh, so but i come back to you a little later devishish i want to get uh, sandeep uh, to clarify on a couple of things which uh, yeah. the other thing other than the nomenclature is uh, the incidental advice yeah. or execution only yeah okay so hmm. yeah please yeah, go please yeah. so so to give you a big picture perspective on that um this gets into a little slippery slope uh, as yes. far as what you can do and what you can't do 
Yes. Uh, but essentially, it depends on where you're coming from. Uh, yes. So if you if you meet a client, for example, let's let's take a practical example. Yes. You meet a client and you say, okay, uh, you how much money do you have? What is your kind of uh, risk appetite? What is the yes. age? What is the family? What are your ambitions? Yes. Uh, so if if you go from a investment goal perspective, yes. uh, I think that is closer to a, what uh, Sebi envisages as RA domain. Okay. As opposed to you going to a client and trying to sell products, you uh, you say, okay, these are the uh, good mutual fund products that I have, uh, yeah, amongst other things. And you know, uh, after that perspective, after that point, if you are actually obligated to do some level of uh, uh, suitability check, so you yes. have to figure because that's a there's a circular of 2011, August 2011. Where they yes. obligate a distributor to do a suitability check. Yes. So some level of advice is in fact mandatory. It's not just yes. prohibited, but it's actually mandatory. Yes. So you'll uh, so but as I said, the distinction comes from how you approach the client. So if the approach is to do goal-based planning, then I think you have a problem. If idea is to first sell product and then kind of uh, set the tone for that by doing kind of doing a check of the risk appetite, age, all those things you can ask. Uh, and in, in fact, you should ask. Uh, so the distinction, as I said, is not it's not completely black and white. Again, it's, it's slightly slippery, but uh, the, that's the perspective because uh, SEBI is also given the exemption of incidental advice. Yes. So you have number one, the obligation of suitability and number two, the exemption of uh, incidental advice, which is available to distributors, which is not really available to uh, other people except for brokers and PMS managers. Yeah. So that again gives you uh, what is incidental and what is not. Again, uh, there's no perfect answer to that, but broadly something which is useful to assessing the risk appetite, etc. Uh, for uh, selling that particular product. I think that would really uh, be incidental advice. Whereas uh, if, you, if you kind of go to the client saying that how much money do you have, where do you want to invest and let me frame a policy for frame, frame you know create a framework for you i think that is what is uh, sought to be prohibited like it's a, it's it's a thin line um, i can't draw it for you but i mean i can give you a sense of uh, where to draw it okay now uh, the other thing uh, sandeep is that there are certain rules in place to prevent misselling which put a certain different set of responsibilities on the seller Okay, now how does that go with this particular thing? Because if I am not supposed to miss it, okay, in, yeah. in that case, I need to do uh, due diligence. I need to have a fairly elaborate process so that I can justify. Look, whether it's a one lakh client or a five lakh client or a five crore yeah. client, the point is to each one, depending on their uh, economic uh, background, yep. that m amount is very, very valuable. Yep. Okay. So how do we determine whether, oh, to what extent am I supposed to do? Because tomorrow I meet a client, let's say I'm an advisor, or oh, I'm sorry, uh, MFD, uh, and uh, a client has approached me with 50 lakh. He wants to invest 50 lakh through me. So what am I supposed to do? Just ask him two questions and say, look, you have 50 lakh. You seem to be reasonably uh, uh, wealthy. Uh, you look at your age is this. And hence, I'm recommending to you uh, a large cap fund. And I pick up the one uh, which gives me the juiciest commission. So now in this context, uh, because I'm not supposed to give you uh, an elaborate justification or anything. I have ensured yeah. that there is some some sort of an investment suitability. You seem to have money. And hence, I can assume that you can take a risk. And since you seem to be, let's say, 40, I assume that you have the time frame to bear that risk. But is that enough? <clears throat> yes, in fact, I, I several years back, you, this was an issue even earlier. I yeah. pointed that out in an article in ET that yeah. these, these two... Um, Ambitions of SEBI are actually contradictory. Uh, Absolutely. On the one, one, one hand, you're saying you can't miss sell. On the other hand, you're saying you, uh, you know, you have to do suitability check. So, yes. uh, my again, I think you'll have to find a kind of a golden mean in, in between, mm -hmm. in which you ask some questions to figure out the risk appetite. Uh, 
uh and uh, you know it can be age it can be family uh income what are you know educational goals etc so, so some level of uh, goal based planning has to be built in uh but uh, again i think the, the the difference would be in terms of sequencing a goal based planner which is an ria would be first starting you know from the big picture and then narrowing it down yeah, to yeah, yeah. the asset classes here you kind of start with the asset class and then kind of do a background check and uh, you kind of uh, d- d- dig deeper into um, whether those products those specific products are suitable or not but there's uh, certainly no obligation to uh, sell you know lower uh, margin products to clients uh, okay. and that's not an obligation uh, okay. which which say be imposed so okay uh, okay yeah now the so we have dealt with name change to some extent we have dealt with the definition of incidental advice and uh, you know now we come to the third thing which is what can an mfd charges clients now if we were to understand it one view point uh, i mean uh, the one informed view point is you can't charge anything to your client and under whatsoever so you can't say that i'm providing you any kind of a support logistics uh, write down any uh, vouchers which justify any sort of an expenses is that correct no so distributor can charge uh, there 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 aren't any restrictions really on charging in fact uh, our earlier view used to be that uh, you they can charge uh, even advisory fees okay uh, but i think that will that is that will become less uh, uh, kosher now with the new kind of segregation between distribution and advice uh, because now they're saying that you know this is what we considered as incidental advice and if you charge you know the probability of it being considered incidental kind of gets diluted so i think it's it's slightly risky to charge but it's still uh, technically possible to charge advisory fees by a distributor to clients uh, but as i said you know it, it gets into a little little bit of tricky territory as far as other expenses are concerned absolutely they can charge this this certainly no restriction on uh, other charges which a distributor can impose it should be it should be transparent should be disclosed of course Uh, and uh, one point one question which you not answer ask me which i'll answer which i'm sure you'll come to is uh, what happens to other products right yes so we are talking about mutual funds and you know incidental advice is only restricted to mutual funds um, other products in sebi's domain uh, there is no incidental advice so remember that uh, the in- incidental exception is not available if you're providing uh inc- any advice with respect to securities outside of mutual funds okay secondly uh, anything outside of sebi's domain you can do anything you want okay okay so if you want to do both advisory and distribution for gold products real estate fds uh, that is outside sebi's domain so you can do any any of it in any combination of advice and distribution okay 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 now uh, one corollary to one of the statements you made earlier can i make uh, 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 do asset allocation make a financial plan or a, uh, a goal uh, plan for my clients without charging them broadly yes uh, okay. it would fall under incidental advice so i okay. i don't see a problem with that okay but once once you charge then it becomes slightly tricky so i would prefer that okay. you not charge and you know put okay. it under your distribution okay fees, uh, commission okay. clearly okay okay now uh, uh, uh uh coming to you uh, debashish now uh, hi yeah welcome welcome debashish good to have you to prem thank you sandeep so there was a little bit of technical problem that firewall uh, i joined little late but it's fine i heard both of you good uh, actually we just started 5 minutes before you joined us uh, so you were uh, and uh, debashish i had made your introduction so we can straight away get into a question with you Yeah. Uh, if you are a MFD, what are your responsibilities now? Yeah. See, as an MFD, I will help my client decide. After that, the informations that need to be provided, the calculations that need to be made, and making it simplified, make him understood. All these comes under an MFD services, and that is huge value additions for n number of customers in India. so hence mfd sebi has not told mfd cannot do these 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 things so only advice piece i would not do i will not enter in an agreement and charge them although sandeep told that you can charge an advisory fee i have uh, i have a doubt on that that aspects 
but whatever service i will do yes i will plan i can help him arrive at that decision by way of certain plans i will do asset allocation very clearly i can do asset allocations and help him decide on uh, in the, on which path he should go he will himself decide i will help him in that decision making okay okay now uh, uh, debashis is there anything in these regulations which requires the mfd to revisit his business model should he seriously consider becoming an ria or should he continue to exist as an mfd what's your view point yeah it's uh, it, uh, my view point may not be helpful it what is required is individual models that our mfds are following and uh, there will be space for both the business models enough okay. space and at india the space of growth that we are in i would rather say that being uh, remaining an mfd for our uh, average mfd will still be beneficial because he is accustomed to the job he, he does he curates the product he compares this he clarifies the doubts and he helps him decide that itself is uh, a service if i can compare uh, uh, um, another product suppose you are going to a mall and buying a ready made dress and somebody else wants a customized tailor made uh, designed dress the in your dress the pieces are embedded the tailoring charges are embedded the designer charge is embedded but in other guys charges separately as per your choice and separate agreement but both have needed both have got demand and both can coexist okay okay that's a good analogy that you've given uh, another uh, significant change which actually is not been discussed anywhere is the fact that today the nomenclature uh, is very restrictive so it is mfd okay earlier uh, these people were advisors do you think uh, psychologically while well, you know sandeep you started with that quote from shakespeare uh, rose by whatever this thing but uh, doesn't the name uh, the nomenclature influence how people perceive themselves and how society perceives them yeah so uh, see it is in the it, the restrictions is in the mind initially Okay. And but uh, I I agree that the name uh, is the temporary glitch that you are thinking that you are called an advisor now no longer called an advisor. But let me tell you that the service that you give and specifically uh, if you see the numbers, I, I come back to the numbers because it's hundred and thirty eight crore population, and there are uh, there are eleven lakhs doctors. and every year uh, 1.5 million 15 lakhs engineers are added and lawyers are 20 lakhs static numbers at any point of time and if you see chartered accountant there are 3 lakhs plus chartered accountants and there are less than a lakh mfd so aap 10000 mein ek hai 15000 mein aap ek ho and iska requirement hai so in the name whatever is the name garb se kaho ki aap mfd ho isme nothing wrong you are adding value and you are adding value to many people let me tell you one thing from little bit of the the economy point of view or the perspective of the policy makers this mfds only will fetch the new investors and convert savers to investor once investor grows big and he has a, a, a big money wealth he has created then he will seek out the advisors but for creating converting the non investors to invest the fast step important step played by mfds and the huge blue ocean market is there and so this cafeteria approach that existing like a health delivery system that you need super specialist also you need uh, the fast level of family physician so both requirement are there they are complementary not competing and people should not think uh, any uh, undermining themselves or any inferiority complex that their name just can so what what is the name is called they are separating it from service perspective i think the perspective is coming from different and uh, not exactly so name i don't think name should matter people are giving a very value added service they should continue there okay okay now one uh, 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 debash is what are the compliance requirements for mfds now has there anything changed as far as their own compliance is concerned should they be better at keeping records should they prove that they've done some sort of a risk profiling they've given this incidental advice uh, or what 
what what should they do so, although the, these questions uh, can be better answered by sandeep but my understanding is that you know you are doing due, due diligence in which we are asking a lot of questions to the specifically the top end mfds that all those questions that they maintain the record and they um, the suitability so best thing is that they are not advising the owner is the new so you get the investor sign that whatever decision is being taken is taken by himself that is the biggest compliance that he will give a declaration that i am only providing information based on which you apply your mind and take the decision that will be one of the first basic level of compliance i think sandeep can add a uh, few more answers to this what type of compliance and everybody need to continue okay uh, sandeep before you uh, uh, actually i have a more fundamental uh, question for you uh, who is the mfd governed by technically he has no relationship with sebi he is not an intermediary uh, like a portfolio manager or a broker or an asset manager or an rie registered with uh, sebi he is not okay uh, tomorrow he uh, i am an mfd i say you know no one can stop me from calling myself uh, prem khatri wealth manager okay uh, then who can take me to task over that so the answer would be sebi uh, and the reason sebi doesn't directly regulate distributors because of bandwidth issues i don't think they have the capacity yeah, sure. to and there are 20 sure. to 30000 sure. active uh, distributors right sure. now sure sure so th- that's the p- kind of practical approach uh, to why sebi is not currently no, no, regulated no, no. But, them directly but under uh, what rule under what rules so, yeah I so have, i mean I'm uh, not sorry yeah. no so i i understand your question yeah. uh, the the thing is uh, sebi will uh, come after you under uh, they can take action against any person really So okay. they will say that you know we are uh, to in investor interest we are taking action against you, uh, okay. and uh, so I mean if you looking at the jurisdiction perspective that that's where they'll come yes. from. Yes. Uh, okay. As, as otherwise you know more likely they will ask MP to kind of uh, derecognize the RN is is the kind of more likely route they'll take. But if there's kind of uh, yeah. major source of uh, you know let's say fraud. uh then then yeah. say the sebi directly gets involved and they they can pass an okay. order against anybody and again those powers are not limited to intermediaries you know if you yeah. and i do fraud we 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 can also get uh, hit Correct. by sebi so okay they can okay. use those broad powers against any person okay okay now uh, from another question i had for you sandeep you been on the regulator side according to me okay uh, this set of uh, uh, new regulations does not make it more attractive for uh, rias okay for a variety of reasons institutions have a lot of restrictions now on them okay yep. because they have to uh, kind of trace back that uh, across their entire group uh, yep. they don't have a dual relationship with you yep. so if i'm taking so you know what i'm getting at yep. so uh, we've seen two institutions get out of that yep. thing all together and they are very large institutions okay uh, uh, my informal uh, this thing with many of the other people who have not surrendered their license uh, is that they will go very slow on the ria part yeah okay uh, so what uh, and uh, my also sense from uh, uh, mfds is that the new set of rules does not make it attractive for me to become an ria anymore any number of restrictions i can have only 150 clients and uh, you know uh, things like that so uh, are we kind of uh, throwing the baby with the bath water and doing this because what do you finally want you want that people should get proper advice and should not be missold products however yeah. what you've done now is the large institutional players most of them particularly the ones which have more than one business vertical are saying look we don't want to get into the ria thing we don't know where this person will yeah. have a relationship with us and get into a conflict individuals are not finding it attractive to become rias anymore mm. so what are we left with much ado about nothing so in fact uh, that's why you know in sebi history this is the first time uh, they've come out with three consultation papers on the same topic yes 
and yes. we represented the industry at multiple uh, you know fifa yeah. fia a lot of lot of organizations yes. and we provide a lot of pushback saying and there's there is one example it's not a completely academic exercise there okay. is one example which is uk where uh, they have tried something vaguely similar yes making making you know this kind of uh, provision again uh, um the original sebi proposal was far more harsh luckily okay. they kind of backpedaled a bit and saying you you to do it client wise segregation but uh, if you look at the previous uh, paper you know it would have been a real disaster and this is exactly what will happen and we as i said you know we have an example in the uk where something yes. similar has happened and in fact it has elitified their own uh, regulator as certif- as kind of done a study which shows that it has elitified the whole uh, concept of advice so where is your distributor you know you you have a 500 rupees sip you're not going to pay 20000 rupees a year to an advisor to get advice your advice is actually 99% of your advice is going to come from the distributor by taking yes. away the advisory role of the distributor you are actually elitifying absolutely. the whole process and therefore 99% of investors will never get any advice whatsoever absolutely so that Prem is the argument we have made yeah. prem i am a counterpoint that's why i uh, interject so uh, this, please you are telling that uh, people are feeling that ria uh, will uh, not be appearing attractive enough as a profession that's what you are yes yes But absolutely you look at the all attractions comes out of the expenses that can be charged or fees that can be charged if per annum 2.5% per asset under advice can be charged for client and you uh, you are co- you are witnessing the coexistence of insurance you lips and all of the things were charging even higher and still people are paying and coming and if you are if you have compliance restrictions confusions and all these thing are the compliance cost if you either outsource it or uh, spend some money for compliance and still you are better off than an mfd which is getting an M- embedded cost that's only just comparison of the money that is at stake so okay. uh, so it's uh, it, the difficulty can be addressed also so we at this point of time can't can't say that whether there will be many people who also will be interested to go there as uh, we mature as uh, investors are getting richer and they will prefer a control over their advisory services okay okay so uh, in a manner of speaking debashis the point you are making is that there is a case for those people who feel that uh, uh, you know they want to give advice for them to become rias there is a strong economic case for it okay good okay. point okay now uh, uh, sandeep if i come back to you again on that institutional players they're supposed to be acting either as advisors or as uh, 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 this thing yes, now who decides that uh, suppose i were to uh, go to abc bank tomorrow uh, which is got both uh, which is an ria and mfd are they supposed to tell me Or, yes uh, yes they 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 supposed to tell you because now it's also mandatory for you, you to have a written agreement with them if you are an ria uh, client okay. no so no if i will, go, uh, they will tell you very specifically that no, you are you are an ria a bank i go to the branch of an abc bank i am a new customer let's say with no legacy so are they supposed to and i say i want to buy mutual funds and they say okay uh, we have an mfd license they give me mutual funds or are they supposed to tell me that look Uh, you are also uh, uh, i also am an ria and hence i do this and this is the difference between these two no no no, no. there's no such obligation so you can okay. say i am a distributor i have an rn number and uh, these are the products which i'd like to sell to you and you yeah, know so if, if i'd I like to do a basic profiling which so, anyway the bank would be doing yeah so if i as an uh, customer go to a bank the bank is not obligated to tell me no. whether they are an ria or no 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 sir no okay. so unless unless they are acting they want to act as your ria then of course they will have to sign an agreement yeah, with you yeah yeah so today the problem is some sebi is also passed on some burden to the investor with they saying look we have created rules एक मैंने आर आई ए क्रिएट कर दिया जो कि तुम्हारे लिए बहुत अच्छा काम करेगा एक एम एफ टी है नहीं बर्डन फॉर द क्लाइंट इंस्टीट्यूशन फिगर इट आउट दे टू टेक पैन नंबर डिपेंडेंट रिलेटिव इन ऑल दैट सो इट बी अज टेक्नोलॉजिकल अपग्रेड फॉर दैम टू फिगर आउट वेदर इफ दैट क्लाइंट इज ऑलरेडी कम टू यू नो ब्रांच ए एंड डन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन देन दिस्टम इट सेल्फ शुड फ्लैग आउट दैट 
his wife has now come uh, as as an advisory client in branch b correct. and correct. And, correct. and stop that so it, it, it'll be a big pain for the institution itself not for the client client okay. client has no obligation to kind of uh, not not do both it's, it's the obligation of the institution okay okay no no my point was that uh, somewhere the onus is moved to me it, buyer beware fir se aa gaya wo ki today i have to find out uh, what is there available in the market i don't know about ria i don't know much about mmt hmm. hmm. okay and these are both rules which are meant to protect me but right. i'm not aware of it yep. uh, it's like this i'm a medical patient i don't know who's a doctor who's a chemist and what's the difference between the two yeah so there, there is a certain set of rules which have been created for the medical fraternity which the uh, the larger population is not aware of i'm just yeah. saying that no well, that's that's a fair analogy because ultimately yeah. you know as i said by 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 number of people who reach out to investors 99.9% are the distributors today yeah. and will yeah. remain in in that kind of a number and you know your pure advisors will remain very handful and will only uh, cater to even more and more elite people they're looking at yes. you know crores crores plus uh, uh, if i, I have to choose management. 150 people i will choose the ones who can pay me the most i mean this is yeah. we are not in an altruistic yeah. world I'm, people are not running ngos yeah, yeah. okay the uh, friend, so the basis the basis coming sorry point to the answer that our previous question is that Investors, you 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 are of the opinion that investors will be in confused state and you will not know which an advisor, which an MFD. That may not be the case because an MFD is supposed to not use advisor word in anywhere in his display in his name. So he is not an advisor. So he is registered as an ARM, uh, uh, which is an MFD. That has to be clear and uh, communicated, articulated clearly. so hence there will not be confusion for the client to know mfd will not use advisory word hence he is not an advisor okay okay no 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 the uh, basis uh, okay uh, uh, following from sandeep's uh, thing on institutions uh, isn't there a bigger opportunity for mfds to become rias because if institutions are going to be abdic- abdicating that entire area then there is a role for individuals to come in and fill the gap if so many large organizations quit the ria license or they become inactive in it then there is an opportunity theoretically speaking for individuals to come in that's one what do you think the basis yes uh, that is quite possible and but it will uh, change over period of time and not immediately okay but uh, advisory uh, you know the uh, let me tell you regulators uh, the philosophy or the perspective that they work from is to think utterly capital market growth while protecting investors correct balancing both the both the objective and this particular one the world over regulators have seen commission remuneration as a conflicted remuneration they okay. wanted people who pay must know how much they are paying they decide the quantum they they decide the quality of advice they want and they monitor and get paid as a customer so right labeling so here also uh, mfd where it is embedded they wanted to reduce slowly slowly because customers should know so other when the, this investor should be aware and demand advisory services so individuals also uh, will try to be in that space which institutions are there and in and and slowly slowly i think institutions also will have uh, client level segregation and have both the uh, type of functions it may come it is only our we are guessing at this point of time but i think both the section will uh, survive and grow and coexist okay okay now uh, sandeep one more uh, very legally technical uh, question for you does this uh, new set of ria regulations subsume and override all that has come earlier as far as the ria rules are concerned or are we supposed to read some of it in conjunction with the earlier ria rules no so uh, they have not brought in a new set of rules they have only amended the existing rules so only okay, okay. to the to the extent that you have the segregation uh, norms etc 
only those okay, things okay. bits and pieces have changed otherwise you know all the old old things remain in place in terms okay. of you know and what is required no education qualification by and large there's no inconsistency between the Be- no because it's an amendment of the existing norms so it's, okay. it's there's okay. there's okay. certainly no inconsistency okay there may okay. be a lot of confusion regarding name change but there's no inconsistency okay okay one um, uh, question uh, um, which i want to ask both of you uh, is uh, and the best is you should answer this first uh, what is the broader message behind these guidelines uh, to the entire distribution community whether you are an mft or an ria what's the broader message which is going out broader message is uh, give right value to the investor and um, if you want to be an advisor uh, document uh, every bits and pieces of this thing and charge him as per his uh, whatever he is ready to pay for it so the service which will be offered will be valued by the investor not by the fund houses not by any other person which is not clearly uh, articulated so separate you distribute and for that you get distribution fee and you advise you get advisory fee and the uh, market uh, determination of supply and demand of service of both will finally equilibrium will set in and will find a new uh, set of market which was existing with what the type of advice okay so, uh, sandeep uh, what do you think is the broader message behind these uh, rules what so I think, are, uh, can i expect in future no so i think you will see a shrinkage in the pure rie uh, teams uh, as such because i think the obligations have increased a lot uh, yes. and if you do both distribution and rie it's even more complex because then you have to uh, do, create blacklists of people and their families it's not that person so it, yes. it, it dramatically yes. makes your life more complex and you know you be become open to regulatory action because you didn't identify that ex's uh, spouse was uh, a distributor client so it uh, it will uh, elitify the whole thing and uh, i think uh, what you'll see is distributors will continue to be okay uh, but at some point what i also predict that there will be a new sro for distributors which is uh, you know a, a new self regulatory organization which uh, said he's been planning for many years now so i think you will yes. see that in the next year or so which will then in okay. in turn regulate the distributors and then sebi will have also have a you know a supervisory okay. regulatory Uh, this thing okay that that's another uh, uh, thing uh, uh, sandeep uh, you know as a uh, legal expert and someone who'd been with the regulator earlier uh, uh, sros uh, i've typically seen that these bodies have which have been in existence for a while you know and they had some uh, history of working together they've had some working relationship they've decided rules bylaws and things like that they make an easier transition to sro sro to my knowledge my, again i'm not a legal expert and i don't pretend to be one uh, cannot be uh, you know uh, just created one fine day so for example uh, as far as uh, uh, the stock exchanges are concerned brokers have had a history before any regulator world over came over there are certain rules and they, you know by laws and things like that uh, so they had a history of working together and then they transited into it certain other industry bodies which had a history of working together then took on the responsibility and said we are the first uh, layer of uh, you know regulation self regulation or whatever but uh, uh, any instances you know of where sro has been created from scratch which is and then so, you know yeah. so normally they won't come out of an existing institution so to give you the yes. example of us you know you have uh, a body called findra uh, that yes, was actually uh, that was an arm of nasdaq so nasdaq yes. regula- regulatory arm was what got converted into findra and then they merged the nyse regulatory arm also into that to create absolutely findra. we also had a similar thing uh, around what 6 7 years back where sebi had floated a paper and then uh, sorry floated a tender and invited people and then that went into dispute so that's why it, it's not taken off uh, but they they wanted to create an sro uh, at, at that point of time for distributors uh, and and advisors presumably uh, and we were part of that dispute so i, I know that first hand um, okay. but uh, that that is kind of in the in the history books now so hopefully sebi will start at this point when 
so you at some point you know in, not in the near future but in 5 or 7 years you'll probably see more and more parity of regulation between distributors and advisors so thing, things are going to get uh, more difficult uh, for both both advisors and distributors okay 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 now uh, 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 this uh, sandeep uh, there have been a stream of questions here mm. uh, you can perhaps see them so i will uh, i picked on a few and uh, i will try uh, not to uh, repeat questions but uh, uh, you know can we use words like rupee funds assets financial services finserv uh if you are acting as mfds i can see I, i think you don't really need to need to wait for my advice just wait wait for the amfi thing which should come which is okay. apparently it'll be based on uh, ad- advice we given to one of the industry bodies so it will most likely reflect what i'm saying already but essentially okay. a combination of the words is will will really be a problem it's uh, you okay. know finance slash wealth and advice slash management so if you combine these two things i think you have an issue i can't get into every single name and tell you whether that is kosher or not but broadly you know if okay. it's Good. if it's uh, really if it's some, as i gave you the example sandeep consultants that's fine but if it says financial con- consultants is probably not fine so whenever okay. it's a combination of these two things the synonyms of this or gives a sense of you know independence as you asked i think then you have a problem otherwise it's fine okay got it got it now uh, uh, the other thing is on what can we charge for and what we cannot charge and what are the other things that we can do so uh, uh, can we offer services like real estate broking state planning through third party professionals who will pay us a reference fee uh, insurance sales is i think fine yeah. sales of uh, bonds fd sales loans etc they can continue so i i answer that let me just rephrase it quickly yeah so three 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 asset classes one is non sebi completely free to yeah. do whatever you want you know whether it's fds okay. whether it's gold real estate wills and trusts anything okay. you want to do great everything you can do great you can sell you can distribute you can okay. advise you can uh, structure you can do whatever else you want within sebi okay. there's a two regimes one is for mutual funds one is for non mutual funds non mutual funds would include securities uh debt mutual funds uh gold etfs so bonds all, all i guess the, bonds certainly listed bonds yeah. so whatever falls into sebi's domain yeah. you can't provide any advice at all even incidentally right for mutual funds okay. you can provide incidental okay. advice and for non sebi regulated products you can do whatever you simple answer okay 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 now uh, uh can anyone do pure financial planning okay uh which, which does not involve recommending the mutual fund product financial planning which d- does not recommend a mutual fund product yeah, um yeah. no no without an rai license cannot do because okay. again it'll, it'll go back to my previous answer which is okay. incident advice is uh, exempt only for mutual funds and not for other securities products Okay. so that would be a problem you need an rai license to do that okay i uh, i know that uh, uh, sandeep you are uh, you know but i still can't uh, refrain myself from asking you a few names because i find the no, no, number of possibilities is very interesting and i want to yeah. uh, understand the broader principle behind yeah. it so yeah, someone sure. says that you know i've been calling myself uh, vm kulkarni he says i've been calling myself nipun investment manager so obviously that's not acceptable anymore no. now right. he says nipun investment intermediaries this will be kind of wider zone of gray i would say okay. investment intermediary should be broadly should be kind of uh, okay. broadly acceptable but again you know it's it's will be in the gray okay. area should okay. be doable according uh, to invest- okay 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 Okay, but do you know these are my opinions? Uh, so, you know, you may you may still get into trouble if <laughs> you kind of yeah, say, yeah, okay, yeah, Sandeep yeah, has said this. Please, uh, he certified it. Our audience, some, please, yeah. uh, please note that whatever we are saying today is being uh, uh, you know uh, being conveyed in good faith. However, for each of you, uh, 
uh, your individual circumstances, uh, please do, do take uh, expert legal advice before acting on it. Uh, uh, from uh, We've been answering questions based on very rudimentary information from you. Uh, there could be broader issues. And finally, uh, yes, without a, a more detailed examination, perhaps our, uh, this thing. So you will need to validate it. So please take due diligence, uh, take help before you act on uh, any information that we are giving out today. Okay. Uh, now, uh, can NRIs become uh, RIAs? Uh, yes, why not? Uh, Sandeep, any? Yes, yes, they can. Why not? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, I'm not able to, there are too many questions. I'm not able to read all of them. Uh, is there any specific yes, ones I'm, which are. I'm even, I'm trying to do that. Uh, okay. Uh, is the partnership firm name Mudra Investments okay? <laughs> should be okay. In the kind of whiter side of uh, the gray. I think that should be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Capital word is fine for okay. distributor, but don't mix capital with capital advice or capital yeah. Uh, but, yeah. management. And uh, actually, wealth advisor, money manager is something you would strongly uh, uh, huh. distribute Correct. people against. Correct. Then what if I'm a certified CFP but continue to be MFD? CFP is a really a degree, right? That's so fine. it's not. Uh, so yeah, you yeah. can do that. Nomenclature. And is. incidentally, I also learned that CFP uh, is no longer uh, uh, no automatic. Only CFA. CFA or or a, or a postgraduate degree. CFA is allowed. Yeah. Not CFP. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, I want to act as a MFD only on new rules. Is it possible? Of course, it is possible. Uh, so, so broadly, you know, if you're if you're going to be a distributor, only distributor, I don't think your life has changed too much. Uh, if you're trying to be distributor and advisor, then your life has changed very dramatically. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, there, there are very, very specific questions uh, but, uh, about uh, individual uh, this things. But I'm now an individual RIA. I want to become a corporate RIA license. Would my RIA license number change? And if that happens, do I have to re-register with CAMS, Carvi uh, for, uh, you know, a mail back report? Because once you're an RIA, you're allowed to... Uh, get the feed from the RNTs uh, on investments made by your clients. I, I, I don't know the answer to that really. So maybe Monty has an answer. What, what, what is the question that whether he can uh, apply for? Uh... So uh, Sachin, Sachin is an individual RIA. He's looking to become, uh, take a corporate RIA license. Yes. So number one, will his uh, RIA license number change? So he has and will that apply, require him to he will apply the license number may change also and during the interim period he, he can only operate as an individual RIA and once the license comes which may be a different number and then thereafter new number can be used and new function can and, okay. other, and he but can will continue. he have to re-register if there is a new code will he have to re-register with the CAMS and CARBI for mailback services and all that I guess he will have to yes Yes, he has to, and at that, that, that just small, uh, just a mail will do. That is not a big. Uh, okay. Uh, Shweta Shetty says, "Can we use financial planner?" I would guess that's not allowed if that's you're an not. MFD. It's, um, yeah, that it's is possible if you're completely, an completely blacklist. Yeah. Okay. Financial solution okay. is also blacklist. Okay. Uh, can an RIA offer free investment advisory services for a limited period? Oh. Uh, so there is a, a, they have put in some restrictions. I am not very sure whether they put in the FAQ or all the regulations themselves. I'll have to check on that. But they they put some restrictions okay. on uh, the free the, the free period. They've also put restrictions on how much you can charge. You can charge only for two quarters in advance. So yeah. I'll, I'll have to check on the free uh, one. Are they cannot I, offer any... Uh, 
allurement any gift any pass back or any such things which will be in the name of in the nature of misselling i don't know about uh, him, whether he can have a period of, of free advice or maybe very nominal advice one rupee advice type of thing that i don't know but uh, he cannot definitely cannot offer any gift allurement or sales campaign for getting the milk investors okay okay and now uh, uh, sandeep there's another this thing for individual rias there's a limit of 150 clients now there are some people who say that look many of my clients uh, have not paid me this year or will not pay me this year okay but uh, so can it be said that only active clients or uh, would you think sebi would give them the leeway i think so you know active active clients is what would count on a particular date really so once you breach 150 yeah. is when it triggers off okay. so then you can't take new clients really so you know if you you had clients earlier who not paid you and therefore you have no longer any relationship with them uh, you can exclude them right. i think quite safely yeah, i get yeah i mean that's quite logical uh, uh, there's a question from vijay thakkar uh, uh, and i think uh, devashish i'll ask you this question can uh, mft carry out goal based planning and asset allocation asset allocation surely yes Oh, goal based planning yeah so you you have a goal and this is what the information you need to plan your goal i can help you in uh, with my knowledge of, of, of planning and all but definitely that is not a prescription for you to invest in because i have this is only plan this is not a product specific advice the plan i think we can as per my understanding of the both the regulation that i uh, read that he can help in planning you are on his behalf planning is you are not advising on the product specifically that you invest in this product and uh, your total this you need how much yes, money think... you need and how much sip you need to do is a very simple ca- calculations and i can help my customer uh, knowing that no so i think uh, I, i have a different perspective on this i think uh, as soon as you call it financial planning it becomes automatically prohibited because financial because planning if you see the definition yeah. it Maybe. says gold based planning is if you see the definition it says gold based planning now whether it falls into incidental advice or not that call you you can take but as soon as you call it financial planning or gold based gold based uh, based planning i think then you getting into a uh, hmm. slippery territory see see the basic okay. difference is again uh, it's, it's, it? it's a very subtle no. difference there's there's no fine line it's a subtle difference between Well, what are you doing in 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 one case as an ria you are uh, saying okay this is the big picture i'll take the 100 variables about a person age risk appetite goals all that and then plug that in find out asset allocation and then 20% goes into equity mutual funds and then and then i'll provide a book of direct clients there as opposed to that and distributor says okay i have come here to sell you a product now before i sell that product to you I, i i need to do a suitability and check and therefore i will do some level of uh, planning and you know uh, assessment so uh, that's kind of the thin line really in terms of whether one uh, you know goes into the other territory or not i i can't say for sure but that's broadly the distinction to be drawn and uh, the, the it goes into the other territory only to the extent of incidental advice They, you cannot give Uh, advice beyond uh, incidental a and b suitability okay i know that's okay. not a but very happy of, answer but it's kind of no, there's a best yes yes no no and both uh, both are still uh, ambiguous and open to yeah. different interpretations yeah, as we speak absolutely. particularly if the amount involved is substantial or if it is uh, you know uh, and like i said you know amount is substantial if there's someone who's retired from bmc uh, even uh, uh, let's say uh, you know uh, even at the lowest uh, level uh, he would be getting a a, a post uh, a retirement this thing of 15 20 lakh and if he comes to you with advice uh, that's clearly uh, a large sum for him and uh, uh, in which case uh, what, what is it that uh you end up by saying he is looking for regular income and you say no uh, 15 20 lakh hai it's a big amount i'll help you grow your capital whereas he may be looking for uh, uh, this thing so we do get into 
Uh, yeah. Can risk assessment be done under distribution? Yes, it can be done. It yes. should be done, whether you are an R, uh, uh, RIA or MFD. Uh, what yeah. uh, is adding financial services? Okay, saying Parek financial services, is that okay? I would consider that to be okay. It's definitely gray area. So gray area? financial okay. services, okay. yeah, capital services, somebody just asked. Uh, capital services, financial services, maybe, I mean, again, it's a gray area. It's not, it's not right. Okay. 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 I've registered in my name, Vipin Vahel. Please guide me. This is okay. I'm, I'm sure yeah. this is okay. That's your name. Uh, so, uh, can MFD offer direct plans uh, where he can charge yes, some percentage on his own from clients? I guess he can't do that. Um, uh, can, I think. Can. Can. Oh, okay. Can. Vishal Vyas has asked this question where he can charge some percentage on his own from clients. And he's not dependent on pure income of AMC commission. We can. Okay. If if it if it's goes into again, uh, if the fee is being charged as advisory fee, then it again gets into the slippery slope of is it incidental? Now it's it's no longer remains incidental. I mean that's the argument on the other side. Okay, okay, okay. But if you charge for then, other services, uh, you could do it. Okay. How are CFP and MFD differentiated? Anita Sethi, MFD is uh, a new, I mean, is a, the category of distributor. CFP is a qualification. Uh, so uh, it's just the way uh, BCom or MBA or CFA. So does CFP automatically entitle one to become RIA? No. So I think that answers. No, it doesn't. For yeah. CFA does, but not CFP. Yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. you need to be a postgraduate professional or CFA. These okay. three are. Okay. Uh, you answered this one, Sandeep sir. Can MFD include capital in his name? Uh, capital uh, by itself might be okay, but capital okay. services okay. might be a little more tricky. Okay. Okay. After wealth alone risk, might be okay. wealth alone might be okay, but Wealth management will be very tricky. Okay, got it, got it. After doing risk profile, can we suggest schemes to our investors as MFDs uh, in, in our own name and get revenue under both models? No, I didn't understand the question. Can an IFA collaborate with NDs for advisory service? Okay, so there are certain platforms which uh, are today providing you all the backup that you need to have as an yeah. RIA if you meet that yep. basic criteria. And uh, you can run an MFD because yeah. typically in your own name and get revenue from both the models. Yeah, but except the RIA cannot get a, get any money from the distributor. Okay, okay. You can't get some kind of a fee arrangement or anything between flowing from distributor to the advisor. Okay, okay. RIA okay. is supposed to get fees only from the client and nobody else. Okay. And there will be client level segregation and not in the yep. same group one can charge. Yeah. yeah. What he's saying is a tie up, so it's not the same group, he's saying. Okay. Okay. So I think, uh, uh, you know, many of the uh, uh, questions are repetitive. Uh, so I think we have kind of run through the anything to, to do with branding and marketing regulations for MFDs. Uh, uh, do these new set of rules and regulations have any restrictions on what how MFD can market themselves? How M no so MFD's life has not changed so much really. Yeah. yeah. Unless MFD also wants to be an advisor. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. So I think uh, 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 if we were to sum up uh, the uh, major changes which impact uh, the MFD Sandeep, uh, you would say one is on the nomenclature. There are yeah. certain uh, these things. Uh, uh, while, uh, and I'm sure that Amphi is going to give a lot of clarity on that very soon on what is permissible and what is not. I also understand they'll be creating a hot desk, which you can 
referred to for, for uh, you know, checking. You can check with them on what is allowed in your case and what is not. So nomenclature, uh, but the broad principle, uh, 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 Sandeep, there being, uh, you have been saying it. Uh, could you repeat that again? I may not um, do it as accurately as you. Yeah, so essentially any synonym of these two words put together really, finance slash wealth on the one side and advice slash management on the other side. So okay. both of them put together or any of the synonyms of these these okay. words would, would be, but by alone, they may be okay. okay. May be okay, may not be okay. Okay. But uh, then, put together, they're definitely in the blacklist. Okay. Then the second is in the area of incidental advice uh, and execution only. So in that particular thing, uh, again, uh, Sandeep, what would be your view? Just two, three sentences on that incidental advice. Uh, what could so, be kosher or what is not? So incidental advice, anything which goes to the basic requirements of A, suitability, B, checking the profile of the person, and C, kind of just making sure uh, uh, the, the product is appropriate for the client. This is what is envisaged in incidental advice. Uh, goal place goal based planning is probably kind of much broader in scope and you kind of first do goal based planning and then you get into so that is probably kind of uh, less acceptable for a distributor to do okay okay and finally on uh, uh, the, what he can charge for as an mft and what he cannot charge for uh, so you said Anything which is not under SEBI, uh, you're perfectly okay to sell that. You can sell insurance, you can sell real estate, you can sell gold. Sell and advise both. Okay. Sell and sell, advise, advise charge in whatever manner you want, whatever percentage you want. Then more interest. Okay. Outside SEBI's domain, SEBI doesn't apply. So okay. you just forget and, that SEBI exists. Okay. Okay. And when it is in so, uh, SEBI's domain and it, it is in, not a mutual fund? Uh, then incidental advice exception goes away and therefore you cannot provide any advice at all whatsoever. Okay, okay. So you should you should still do a suitability check, but you can't provide okay. any form of advice because okay. that exception is only for mutual funds. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, uh, summing up the discussion uh, today, uh, this thing, uh, uh, finally, uh, Debashish, on yeah. ground, how does the life of the MFD change? Yeah, so uh, I, I quote uh, Sandeep that uh, MFD's life will remain as it is. And, uh, and I will say that uh, the fear that people have that with the changes of regulations that their business, their business model and their life will be affected, it is not. What they should focus on to grow further and there is enough scope is uh, they will continue to have their goodwill in the investor's mind, their trustworthiness, their neutrality, the investor's interest is supreme. That should be ever focused. And this highest bidder getting the uh, product business and their commission should not be their mission. And the income only will be an outcome. And if they focus on this, no RIA can bid them. They are, in whatever whether it is advising incidental or otherwise, as long as their client loves them, it comes back to them repetitively. They make, uh, they, they, they create wealth by uh, simply by distribution services. So be it. So for MFD community advice is need not unnecessarily bug down with the fear apprehensions that life has changed. What will happen? You tell me whatever past regulations came, which regulations actually resulted in the industry growing negative or slow down or uh, industry has not grown or uh, uh, or our MFD's income has not gone up. Every the, the reactions to every regulation in the industry has grown stronger, better, faster. Maybe some are due to the regulation, some are in spite of the regulation. But sure outcome is the industry will grow further, higher. MFD need not have any fear. Similarly, some, some people who plan for an RIAC, they should go ahead and do RIAC because People see future there as well because investors community clients also will get divided. Some people have their own choices. As they told you, designer dresses are also demanded and ready-made dresses are also demanded. So there will be client and all. I know that the huge market that is untapped, only 1.5% of the population of India has known what mutual fund is. So you have a huge uh, blue ocean to go, go and grow. 
so no need of any fear and and added i i got some positive message from sandeep that um that as, as mfd life has not changed and he could they can still charge that what he was telling and sebi will not bother unless you are going into advice field then all these things are actually added assurances reassurances so since our world is largely mfd and some ri are coming in the horizon now both should grow but there is there is scope for both and i wish all of them to grow in their own field you have your own suitability of the model you choose and stick to that and your own uh, whatever is wo munna bhai ka koi picture mein tha munna tujhe jo suit karta hai wohi kar dusra ka taraf mat de i will advise that that jo aapke suit karta hai aap jo model mein aap business mein grow kar sakte ho wohi karo aage badh so great uh, uh, so i think uh, we, we've had a very very useful session today uh, thank you sandeep for taking out time and joining us uh, uh, you're very clear you're very lucid uh, and uh, so uh, to me personally uh, i have had a much better understanding of uh, uh, this set of regulations and all the reading that i've done all my conversations with other people so thank you sandeep and i'm sure my our audience would agree uh, with uh, me when i say that this uh, last 70 75 minutes has been brought more clarity to me than anything else they would agree uh, with me i'm sure they would agree with me thank, thank you uh, so much thank you devashish uh, for uh, supporting this particular discussion uh, you uti uh, has sponsored this particular se- session more importantly for us uh, debashish as you've given us uh, the, uh, how this impacts uh, the mft community at large and uh, so thank you so much debashish for uh, from my side also a great thank you to kapil mutual and them and specifically sandeep has been a very good uh, uh, knowledge uh, disseminator and also he has been a friend also and he from uti and we have a uti i thank him for being part of this thing in future if we require to consult him and getting a more clarity on this matter we will definitely do so and thanks to all the participant who have come from all over india and registered themselves and that benefited out of this program and thank you all of you thank you okay chalo bye 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 sandeep bye the bashish bye. bye everyone